Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about how we can make components move within Fusion 360 so that we can see how it will actually function in real life. Stick around. It's going to be revolutionary. All right, before we get started, the first thing we're going to tackle is um, section analysis, which allows us to slice our objects in half so we can see how it looks on the inside. So you can see how this bike frame will move. This is just an Autodesk sample that comes with Fusion 360, so anybody can play with it. I didn't model it. I'm not going to lay claim to that. But um, section analysis allows us to kind of get inside of the part and we can just toggle it on and off by uh, adjusting analysis and then within analysis you can actually set up multiple different uh, views so you can change between them so movements really help on projects like this this is a tv nook i'm designing that uh, will hold a tv and it has you know drawers that pull out and the TV actually opens up to reveal a, I guess, secret compartment where like board games and VHS tapes, if those still exist, and cool stuff like that can be hidden. But where this really, the movement helps is that we can turn on, we can first turn off the like room and see only what we're building. And then we can bring it around to the back and we can see how it's all going to come together. And as you can see here, this is a great example of where this notch is in the wrong place and I can just move it lower and get it all lined up before I ever build anything. And like here is a you know piston that's on the back of your car. I think they're called struts. Um, they like open, hold your trunk open and it'll hold the door closed. And then when you open it to a certain degree, it will push the door open and I can model in stops. And then we can use the section analysis and turn on the room again to make sure that, hey, when I open the door all the way, I will hit the frame here before my TV smashes into the corner of the house. So this is all how movements within Fusion or joints that have movements in them are useful. So we're obviously not going to tackle something this complicated right out of the gate. We're going to jump over here to week 12 and we have these simple components. Um, that we are going to put together and today we're going to talk mainly about revolves or today we're going to mainly talk about parts that spin. So let's get started. The very first thing we have to do is if you're in my class you would have uploaded this file from Schoology um, under week 12. Um, if you're somebody from the World Wide Web I guess you can contact me I'll give you the file it's not that complicated or you could draw a simple wheel with a hole in it and some pins. So here we go. Um, the first thing we have to understand is let's talk about um, we have to ground something. Whenever we're going to have parts start to move, one of them has to be grounded because if not, when you try to move it, the whole thing will just slide around. So we're going to ground the base, which is the red bar. So we're going to go ahead and hit ground. And we are going to turn off for now the linking arm because we don't need it. It'll just get us confused. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach this wheel to this hole. Now, in real life, you'd kind of do, you know, two man, two handed show of lining the wheel up and then pushing the pin in. But in fusion, you kind of got to do one at a time. So we're talking about it's under joint. And if we then look in joint, we can then select the different movement types. So up until now, we've done all rigid joints like week 11 was rigid joints. Today, we're going to do revolve. Actually, it's called. Revolute, I think is the word they use. And then slider joints we'll do next week. And then cylindrical joints, which is about a round pin sliding in a hole as well as spinning. And uh, a pin in a slot, which is exactly what it sounds like. Two planes, meaning basically like setting two things on top of a table and being able to slide it around. And then lastly, like a ball in a joint. I always say this would be like what your knees kind of like, where you have a round ball inside of like a half moon shaped circle and it would slide around. So today we're talking mainly about um, revolute or revolve joints. Um, the one thing I want to say is these are modal, meaning once you click into it, all the remaining joints you do will keep doing that joint until you go in and tell it to do a different type of joint. So I'm going to click on revolve. I'm going to go to position and I'm going to grab the inside of the circle and here. 
and then I, if I hold down control, I'll stay on this plane, and there you go. And you can see that it is revolving as demoed, or as, you know, gives you a little quick demonstration. So we click OK, that works perfect. Now in the real world, this pin, we would push in through this hole and into this red block. And in the real world also, this pin, this blue hole would be slightly bigger. The red hole would be slightly smaller. So when we push the pin in, you might have to hit it with a hammer to force it in there. But that would allow the pin to be kind of wedged in the red block, but still around the blue block to eat the blue wheel to easily revolve. So let's go ahead and do that. So J for joint. We actually want this to be a rigid joint because it would not rotate in real life. So we're going to go ahead and then select the pin and there and a flip. Now the problem here is if we look down from above, if we drove in this pin, we would actually just squeeze the tire against the red block and the tire wouldn't go anywhere. The wheel wouldn't go anywhere. So we actually need to produce a small gap. We're going to use a 0.01. And this is where section view becomes uh, advantageous because now we can, I'm sorry, I need to go to inspect, like click on here, drag this down, and we can now see that there is a gap here that will allow it to spin, but um, still would hold it on there. Now, in real life, we actually, there'd be a lot of friction in this scenario because um, the back of the tire is rubbing against the, the, the base. So what we're actually do is we're going to edit this joint. And we can get to this joint one of two ways. We can find it here. You see it highlighted the blue. Or you can go here and it lists out all the joints you've created. So we're going to right-click, edit joint. And then we are going to click on this arrow because we want to move it out, also 0.01. And what that all does is that produces a... Uh, a gap on the front, a gap on the back, so the tire would spin. And if we rotate it in real life, it would rotate around. Of course, if I turn off analysis, it would do that. Now, that's basically done so far. Now, we need another set of tires and another pin back here. And I once did have a student who, uh, when I gave an assignment like this, then went off and started modeling a second tire. Like, it's the exact same one, but they were going to draw it twice. It's not what we're doing here. We can copy this tire and put it over here. There's two ways to copy. I'm going to show you both. First way is we go to the wheel, we right-click, and we hit copy. And then we go to the overall, the parent. Okay, so we're going to copy. I copied it. I go up to the top, and I hit paste, and I get a warning, which just says you moved it. And then if I grab this, I can drag it off, and I can click OK. And then I can do a J for join. Zoom in, hold down shift, I'm going to select the inside, and I'm going to select here. And I want to switch it to a revolute, and then I do need to move this out the 0.01 to, that we did on the spacing, because when we get to the linking arm, it will not work. So where's my little window? There it is. We'll do 0.01, and there we go. Now, I could also do pin. I can hit Control on the keyboard C for copy, just like you would in Word or Google. And then V will paste me another one right there. And if I accidentally click OK and they're over the top of each other, I can turn off the pin and the wheel. And then I can do a J for joint. And I can go in here and I can select the inside of that. And it's not going to be, it's going to be a rigid. So I switch it back to a rigid. And then I can come over here, and I can go like that. And then, again, I have to move this to 0.01. Okay. So now we turn this all back on, and we have two wheels. Oops, I don't want the linking arm on right now. We have two wheels that rotate. Perfect. Now we're going to use the linking arm. And we're going to do the exact same thing. J for join. We go in here, and we're going to pick the inside. And we're going to link it to there. Now, it's going to set it up as a rigid joint. We have to do a revolve joint. And we click OK. And then we do the same thing again. Now, this will be, this is a bit confusing, a little quirk of fusion, which is just something you need to understand. When I select here, it's going to jump over there and revolve. It's still linked to the other wheel. It just can't do that complex math in the, its little demo. So you click OK. And now we have a joint 
that works perfectly. Perfect. So last thing we need to do is we need to put a screw in here. Um, we don't have to model the screw because McMaster Carr, which is the a wholesaler who provides screws, bolts, and thousands or millions of other things, already has it. Now, if we go to insert from McMaster Carr, we can then search their website for the screw we need. Now, I've already um, searched the website, and I know what number we need. So I typed in the part number we needed. I, I had already gathered that. This is a little uh, stainless steel 1024 by, I think, half inch. Uh, three eighths, I'm sorry, three eighths inch long screw. So we're going to hit product details and then we are going to use the step file for fusion. So we drop that down to step file and we hit download. And there's the screw. I'm going to drag it up so it's a little easier to see. And then we're going to join this and this will be a rigid joint. So let's move back to rigid. And then we come in here and we select the bottom of this and the front of here. And we click OK. And then we are going to copy this screw again. And it is now here. So I'm going to go ahead and drag it out and click OK. And we're going to go J for join. And it's right there. And it's going to go right here. And boom. We now have week 12 done. And we have a fully functioning little example of a locomotive linking arm um, all done in movement thanks for watching hopefully you learned something we'll see you in the next one